Mr. Kevesh, um, you are, are in line. You are very welcome. Uh, World Ham Congress call you and uh, please talk about it. Uh, what is new in Australia? How is with your amazing machine for decodecting? Very, very, very welcome this year too. Thank you, Maida. And congratulations again on organizing the World Hemp Congress. It is a great credit to you. I am talking about updating where our progress is, but my topic is the miracle of decorticating hemp without retting. This is how hemp can now successfully compete against all other products. Maida, my name is in Hungarian, you are very correct, is Kovash. In Australia and in English speaking world, I say Charles Coves. So there you are. My mother always likes me being called Coves. Yes, because uh, here oh. we talk even uh, Hungarian language in this area. Uh, it's official Slovenian uh, in our uh, area, Hungary and Slovenia language, even in school. So I understand Coves. And um, thank you. I was right. <laughs> it's your word. Please. So if we turn to the next, if we turn to the second slide, the second slide is that the truth will set you free. And today I want to share some truth with the audience all around the world. The third slide, this presentation I am making in honor of Adrian Francis K. Clark the founder of TCI and the inventor of the world's best decorticator, a decorticator that does not need retting of him. Adrian died last October in 2015 and he dedicated the last part of his life to solving the major problem of the hemp industry, how to decorticate without retting. Why did he do this? Next slide, please. I wish to share with you the philosophical basis of textile and composites development journey, the big why. Why did he do this? Now we're on the next slide. Human freedom, and I learned this from my Hungarian parents, when they left Hungary after World War II as refugees to come to Australia. Human freedom globally is enabled by successful, profitable, sustainable family farms. Hemp is the crop that can enable this. If the problem of decortication economically could be overcome, TCI has overcome this problem and Adrian Clark dedicated 22 years of his life to solve this problem because he was committed to helping people stay free. Next page, next slide. I now have a picture of the D8 decorticator that overcomes the problem. This machine is working here in Australia it will process between one and three tons of hemp stalk, green hemp stalk, dry hemp stalk. Next slide, please. I am issuing an invitation to anybody who sees this presentation. You are invited to come to Melbourne, Australia to see this decorticator in action. When you invest in a D8, we will reimburse, we will pay you back your travel and accommodation expenses to come to Australia and to stay here. We will pay for your holiday. You can also see this D8 working in the videos shown on our website at textilecomposite.com.au. Everybody who has actually seen the D8 in operation is satisfied and delighted that the D8 works. Next slide, please. 
Do not believe anybody who says this machine does not work. Such people have not seen it in operation. And they wish to preserve the old style of decorticating with ritting because that is what they know and that is what they have invested in. Remember, the truth will set you free. This machine liberates farmers around the world to succeed with hemp. And our wish, and that's why we support, and that's why I'm speaking tonight at the World Hemp Congress, Maida, this work that you and your organisers are doing is important for the future of the planet. Thank you. We were because next. we are in same uh, opinion. Yes, so you have next slide, hemp fibre. Hemp fibre and herd is now much cheaper to produce without retting by using our D8 decorticator. It can now compete more readily against any competitors. Next slide, please. From our perspective, there are nine big advantages of industrial hemp. And I'll, on the next slide, I want to share these nine because I think it's important that everybody involved in hemp understands what the true benefits of hemp are. There are many more, but I think these are, we think these are the big nine. Number one, hemp is environmentally clean and causes virtually no damage. Two, hemp requires less fertilizer than chemicals. Three, hemp uses smaller amounts of water than comparable fiber crops. Four, hemp improves the soil. Number five, hemp is easy to grow and can generate good profits for farmers if decortication without retting is available. Next slide, please. Hemp is a natural antibacterial fibre. That is number six. Number seven, hemp products of all descriptions each have competitive advantages. Every single one has different competitive advantages. Number eight, value can be added to hemp raw materials in a vast range of ways. And number nine, hemp products can be used locally and globally for different purposes. So in Slovenia, in Hungary, these two countries will produce different products and global markets will want different products. Next slide, please. Already, enlightened consumers are hungry for hemp products, but they cannot get them. This 20% of the existing world's markets is more than enough for hemp production over the next five years if the hemp industry handles this opportunity well. The thinking people, the thinking consumers with money want hemp, hemp products. Next slide, please. Successful competition against all other products and successful global hemp industry growth requires five strategic initiatives. Next slide, please. Number one. We must generate mark demand for hemp rather than farmer push. It would be a big mistake to go and talk to farmers, have them growing hemp and then not knowing what they are going to do with this wonderful crop. The way forward is to identify well-funded and successful businesses that have already publicly committed to reduce their negative environmental impact. And we must educate them about the potential for unretted hemp to be the way that they can solve their environmental challenges. We need to speak with big public companies who presently use fibre chemicals, who use cotton, who say publicly their annual reports 
We want to reduce our environmental impact. We are concerned about climate change. We want... All of us the hemp must look for these companies. We must keep records of them. We must approach them. We must bring them to the attention of our colleagues. These companies that have publicly said, we want to reduce climate change impact. We want to reduce chemicals in the environment. We want to protect this planet for the future of our children and our grandchildren. Let us find these companies. We in Australia have found many of these companies around the world and all of you listening will know other companies. Strategy number two, embrace an abundance philosophy and not a scarcity philosophy. Hemp can radically improve the lives of 70% of the world's 7 billion population today cannot afford to buy a new cotton shirt. Future sustainable economic growth will come from this 70%, not the existing 30% of consumers who do not need more material goods. In Australia, in New Zealand, one of the biggest growth industries is storage companies because people have got so much stuff they don't know where to put it. So they're hiring premises to put stuff. It is the 70% of the world's population that hemp can make a massive difference to. In the Australian financial press, in the European financial press, I read it all the time. Companies say, where is the growth coming from? Hemp is the answer to that question. Strategy number three. Avoid commoditization of hemp products. Do not make hemp a commodity. Do not fall into this trap. Avoid the current state of oil producers, iron ore producers, sugarcane producers. In their cases, it is the traders who make the profits, not the producers or the growers. Do not give away this magnificent raw material at a cheap price. When I talk to companies in textiles who are producing cotton, they ask me how much is the hemp fibre? I say to them that is a silly question. Do not answer that question. Go back to them with a question to say, are you caring about the environment? Are you caring about water? Are you caring about chemicals and pesticides? The market will pay. The market does not, not everybody in the market wants fast fashion, wants cheap textiles, cheap, cheap, cheap. This is such a lot. This is what the globalising forces want us to think. Do not make hemp a commodity. And if we follow these strategies of talking to big companies and getting them to be interested in hemp with market demand, market pull, not farmer push, we can avoid commoditization for many years. You do not go in and buy a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or a BMW and expect to pay a cheap price. Do not sell hemp cheap. It is a magnificent product. Strategy number four. Harness. The next slide. Harness skills experience and relationships in local communities to identify the hemp products that should be produced and then supply the markets that want these products both locally and globally. The beauty of hemp is that we can create magnificent local economies and globally we in the hemp industry see that globalization is not the solution to everything. Small amounts of globalization, yes, but not everything. Herd should not be transported all around the world. It should be used locally. Slovenia products will be different to Hungary products, to Croatia products, to German products, to English products. Number five, 
Our job, next slide, is to educate our politicians in each of our countries and enlist their support to succeed against the backlash of those established businesses who are opposed to hemp because they will lose money. We must be aware that Monsanto, that DuPont, that cotton companies, that other pesticide companies do not want hemp to succeed. The medicinal cannabis, look at big pharmaceutical companies wanting to take over medicinal cannabis in the name of protecting the public from a natural plant. We need to educate ourselves. We need to educate these politicians. We do not, we do not, we need to understand that the forces opposed to success of hemp are playing very rough games. They are not playing love everybody and be kind to everybody. Hemp is a threat to very established business. We need to understand that and we need to collaborate amongst each other and not compete against each other. And that's again why we need an abundance philosophy. Next slide, please. I have for you here two pictures showing the amazing strength and qualities, unretted hemp fibre from our deep decorticator. Anybody looking at this presentation can have a free sample of this unretted raw fiber. Everybody that tested this fiber is absolutely amazed at its strength, its quality. It is not retted. We can produce this fiber in half an hour from the farm. We harvest from the farm, put it through our decorticator. We have raw fiber, strong fiber, stronger than fiberglass, almost as strong as carbon fiber. Then when we degum it, you can see the other picture. We can degum in three hours. That material can be spun on standard cotton spinning equipment. It is not long fibre because long, long fibre spinning machines are going out of fashion. Adrian Clark was committed to enabling degummed hemp fibre to be spun on standard cotton spinning equipment. Our decorticator enables this beautiful fibre to be produced much cheaper and to compete against cotton, not that we want to sell at the same price as cotton, but we can now compete against all other natural fibres with the best fibre. Next slide, please. At Textile and Composite Industries, at TCI, we believe and Adrian Clark gave his life, and Anthony Clark, his brother, who is the executive chairman of our company, and is continuing Adrian's work with me and with other colleagues. We believe hemp, without betting, can make an amazing, inspiring, nurturing, positive, sustaining, and life-giving difference to the planet. All the material that I see coming across our desk, all of the information on the internet of this wonderful crop, hemp, is an extraordinary future for the planet if we work together. And this Congress is an important part of our dialogue of teaching us to work together. What this requires, for example, with Canadian hemp growers who are growing for seed, our decorticator can decorticate their stalks, even down to two to one meter, half a meter long, it can go through our decorticator and turn that valuable waste stalk into fiber. Companies that presently use fiberglass can use this beautiful, strong hemp fiber. We know autocar, motor car manufacturers in Europe use hemp fiber, but not for structural parts. The fiber that comes out of our decorticator is strong enough to use to build any motor car. And the reason why I said the truth will set you free is because some people, their interest to say that our fibre is, that our machine does not work. Our fibre we will send to anybody in the world to test. We are totally satisfied. So the next slide, please. So here's the big question for us all. What are you waiting for? 
Your job is to do what you see needs to be done. In my work, I am very much influenced by the work of, of an American genius who died in 1983 called Buckminster Fuller. I urge all of you to understand Buckminster Fuller. He was awarded 47 honorary doctorates. He died in 1983. He dedicated his life to making the planet work for everybody and not just a minority. And one of the core principles that he shared and taught was that my job made it your job. And each one of you looking at this presentation, your job is to do you uniquely see what needs to be done. We don't want a global organisation controlling him, but we do need to understand the extraordinary opportunity. And for each one of us, what you are passionate about doing, inspired to do, in him, that is what you are meant to be doing. On the last, next slide, which is the last slide, you have my details there, the website, textile composite, my email, send me an email, I'm happy to send this presentation, Later, you are free to send this presentation to anybody who asks you, I will happily share it, I will happily answer any questions, Anthony Clark will happily answer any questions. We are absolutely satisfied that the opportunities for all of us are huge. We will happily provide vast amounts of information that we have. We thank you for this opportunity. I would, if I can answer questions, I would love to answer questions. Yes. I have been talking for 23 or 24 minutes, and you can go back on track now, or I will answer questions. Thank you, and thank you for your attention. Great, 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 great uh, work. Uh, Charles, and um, I will ask for start uh, audience some question here. Yes, you have questions? Hi there, Charles. Uh, thank you for uh, the interesting um, speech. Um, my name is Corbett uh, from America with Hemp Seed Warehouse. I uh, buy and sell seeds. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the seed exchange out of Chicago, Illinois. Um, I've been worried about him uh, turning into commodity as well. Uh, seed exchange is currently uh, trying to uh, sell futures of both uh, hemp and seed. Uh, and uh, like I say, I'm, I'm against it because uh, the farmers, uh, they're the ones who lose money out of it. Uh, how do you suggest we fight against the big industries about uh, with um, uh, turning hemp into a, a commodity? Excellent question. How do we fight commoditization? And the starting point is the awareness of it, so I'm, I'm delighted that you have seen this problem. The legal profession, I was an international tax lawyer for 20 years. The market is constantly trying to commoditize. The problem with commoditization is it makes life easy, but it absolutely becomes a race to the bottom. And our world is being destroyed by this desire to race to the bottom. In Australia, in America, you can buy t-shirts for $10 that are only worn three times and then they are thrown into the rubbish or they are shipped to poor countries. I have seen a movie of vast volumes of tonnage of used cotton material being sent to Haiti. Haiti doesn't even know what to do with all this stuff. When we understand what is happening, then when we educate ourselves, we can respond to those who wish to commoditize by saying we refuse to be commoditized. And each of us has to understand the threat and we need to give the information to usable information so that we negotiate that situation. The people in the cotton industry and in the pork belly industry and in the orange futures industry, they love this stuff, but the producers of pork, the producers of oranges, they are being literally screwed. Let us avoid that because at the moment we are a cottage industry and a bit like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, we do not have to sell ourselves cheaply. The, the less of us that sell cheaply, the less we will be commoditized. 
and it's not necessary, it's wrong to be commoditized. So uh, I have, thank you for your answer. Uh, uh, here is one question uh, more. Uh, maybe much more um, technical issue about uh, your machine. Good. About your, uh, this machine, uh, the corrector. I, 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 the porticator. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm just a little bit tired here. Sorry. Yes, uh, technical issue. How many hemp you can uh, um, uh, uh, reproduce with this and so on? So that uh, uh, for agriculture uh, people here. Yes? Yes. Thank you. So this machine can be moved very easily. It weighs less than three tons. It can be put onto the back of a small truck and taken from shed to shed. We do not recommend operating the machine in the field, but it can operate in the field with a tractor or in a shed with a tractor or with diesel or electricity. Now, this machine, it will process up to three tonnes per hour, but when you look at how, it, the, how the stalk goes into the machine, you will see that this requires handling the mechanics. So you cut the stalk, bring the stalk to the machine, and depending on how well your me me mechanics are organised, you can feed between half a tonne and three tonnes an hour. Now, as you know, three tonnes of stalk will turn into 30% fibre, 70% herd. They come out of two different parts of the machine. And if three tonnes is going in, then three tonnes has to be taken away. So all of those logistical elements, every, every buyer of such a machine will work it out and we are happy to work with them to work out those logistics. If you have 500 hectares of hemp, then these machines can be modular. Hemp is so strong, I assure you that unretted hemp, is, it will stop any big machine and so we, the, the return on the investment of this machine, even at one tonne an hour over the course of one year, it's an extraordinarily profitable machine. And we have constantly been looking at making sure that a buyer of this machine can make an excellent profit. Someone could buy the machine in Slovenia and take it from region to region doing five hectares at a time, pick it up, move it in half a day to the next region. It is very easy to move. So uh, have you can... information to anybody, obviously, and, and our website has a lot of information as well. So we have I... technical specifications which we can email. Sorry, I jumped in your word. Uh, so exactly uh, in Slovenia we can buy this machine, uh, maybe in smaller... Uh, just a little bit smaller for small producers? Um, now the machine is one size, but a number of smaller producers could get together. And now with interest rates being so low, to finance such a machine is very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Question more? Okay. Here in public? Any questions? No. Uh, you was uh, so amazing, Charles. Uh, your word, word to word, <laughs> word to word. Uh, please, um, for your conclusions, we will fly then in Greece after uh, your speech, and uh, that we will be not uh, out of the timing. Um, you have minutes and uh, tell your word words uh, for end of this uh, discussion? Well, I would once again congratulate you, Maida. You have done a magnificent job. I would love to have, make sure that we get the YouTube videos to see all these presentations so we can all learn from the wonderful work that you have put in. I wish you a wonderful demonstrations tomorrow and Tuesday, and I look forward to being in Slovenia with you shortly. We wish see you this uh, next year in uh, Slovenia 
we really we were really, really 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 happy here and uh, thank you very much Charles see you soon